very closely, and that's in First Kings chapter 5, verse 4. First Kings chapter 5, verse 4. Say, but now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side so that there is neither adversary nor evil confronting me. Can you read with me again? But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side so that there is neither adversary nor evil confronting me. So that there is neither adversary nor evil confronting me. I love that story because it's about, it's Solomon that mentioned that. And we know, what, what can we say about Solomon? Let's go, let's go. Wisdom riches who is excited because the last day of the month i'm starting with riches i'm starting with wisdom this new year in the name of jesus and i'm doing it from the place of rest are you saying it as i'm saying because it's i i i am saying you know hey hey love your neighbor as yourself hallelujah i am starting this new year from a place of rest in wisdom in launching me into riches in the mighty name of Jesus, launching me to fulfillment of the purpose of which I have been created. In the name of Jesus. I love this. He said, Hiram, look at verse 1. Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants to Solomon. When he heard that he was anointed king in place of his father, for Hiram always loved David. So Hiram was David's friend. Said, and Solomon sent to Hiram, saying, You know how David, my father, could not build a house to the name of the Lord his God, because wars were about him on every side, until the Lord put his foes under his feet. Said, but now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side, so that there is neither adversary nor evil confronting me. Verse 5 said, And I propose to build a house to the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord said to David, my father, Your son, whom I will set on your throne in your place, shall build a house to my name and presence. That was his purpose. And you looked to fulfill that from a place of rest. Maybe from January, February, you say, ah, PF, You know, I've been seeing a lot of posts and people were there, 2004, be good to me. I'm like, 2004 happened to happen to who? You are the one that will happen to every day of the year 2024. Because you will walk with so much audacity, knowing, because it's knowledge that will bring your confidence, right? Knowing that God has sent you and you accomplish that which he has sent you in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is from a place of rest. Please, what do you think you can do from a place? If someone is resting, would that person say, I'm tired? Would that person be stressed? Would that person say that he or she cannot do anything? answer me please no so when you are from a place of rest, it's, it's talking about being replenished being restored being strengthened and being prepared for the next feast do we understand because sometimes when you've walked you're tired the next day i want to rest so that you can what continue amen amen so i have just these very few instructions for you i'm sure crossover service please don't miss it hallelujah I said, henceforth, you live from the place of rest. You live from the place of rest. L-I-V-E. You live and walk from a place of rest. When someone has rested, you are replenished and you have enough wisdom to do what you need to do. I love Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15. Can we project that? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15. 15, te telling us to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as what? As wise. One of the things I would always see about King Solomon was that he was a very wise man. Look at how he leveraged on the relationship of his father. He didn't say that, well, this is a new phase, new system, new da 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 da, and then he just wants to start um, to have a uh, friend or ties or treaties with other nations, leaving that of the relationship of his father. But no, 
he leveraged on that. How much of the relationships have you been able to establish in the year 2023? It is time to leverage on it. I'm not saying that you should usurp. I'm not saying that you should begin to suck people dry. No. No. No, no, no. He gave things in return. In fact, if you read that part, when he said, I would need your skilled men, tell me the wages. He paid back. Do you understand? But he was able to leverage on that relationship to get the cedars and the cypress that, they, that he needed to build the temple. For your purpose, you have to know to leverage on relationships. And you cannot say you are leveraging on relationships and the words of your mouth are not seasoned with salt. So know what to say. As a matter of fact, from your words and actions, it's a suit if you are a fool or you are wise. How will you know if someone is a fool? Is it by dressing? Is it by, ah, oh, she dressed like a fool. She dressed like a very wise woman. No, it's relationship. Words of your mouth. How you look. The things you say. They tell so much about you. And we definitely tell people, either make people gravitate towards you or repel. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, the next thing I want to talk about. Okay, did we project that scripture at all? Okay, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but what? As wise. Let's go to the next verse. Saying what? Redeeming the time because the days are what are evil, knowing what the will of the Lord is. Hallelujah. How do you redeem the time? Through wisdom. And I love the book of James. Say that if any man lack wisdom, let him what? Ask God that gives to all men liberally. Then one thing I want you to know is that you have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let someone say Holy Spirit. Let's go to John chapter 14 verse 17. And of course Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. John 14, 17. Said the spirit of truth, that is the Holy Spirit, that is Jesus Christ talking to his disciples, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, he dwells with you and will be in what? In you. Then let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. I want to just match that. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, before we read Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Say, for God has not given us what? A spirit of fear, but of power and of what? And of love and of what? And of a sound mind. You cannot have the Holy Spirit and lack wisdom. So it's a call to walk in with the Holy Spirit. If truly you want to have wisdom and not just having the ideas, how you know he's telling you what to do, but until you are a doer. Because ah, the Holy Spirit told me, but you ignored it. So one of the ways to show that you are obedient, uh, you are wise, is being obedient. Amen. Amen. So you must learn to obey from your place of rest this year. You must glean from the wisdom of the Holy Spirit because he will not lead you to where you should not go. And that proves your sonship also. He said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are, what? they are the sons of God. So if you are shouting, I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God. If you like, sing it, dance it, everything. But if you do not follow every instruction that the Holy Spirit is giving to you, you are telling God that you are not his child. Hallelujah. And he will not do what he needs to do for you. Lastly, let's go. Ephesians. Are we in Ephesians 3.20? Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works inside of us. What power again? The Holy Spirit. Remember, it's the spirit of what? Power. Hallelujah. So I said this year, it is a fresh start. This week, it is a fresh start. Do as instructed. Don't be too comfortable with the familiar. Times are changing. Wisdom is flexibility which is how you embrace every of God's instruction. I have a very short story, and that is what I'm going to end with so that you learn from it. I said here you have to hold on to your truth, which is revealed to you by God. And it's a story of my washing machine. When we first got married, we didn't buy a washing machine. So a few months into our marriage, my husband bought the washing machine, right? And before then, we had duvet and all of that. And so white, all white. So 
I would pick it up, I would wash before the washing machine. I wasn't even thinking of laundry. Mat. To me, I, if I got a woman that used to come to the house to wash, and she would wash rubbish. Sometimes I have to rewash and say, ah, see this now, see this now, you know. They, she wasn't just doing... Uh, so, finally, we're able to afford washing machine. She'd be, ah, what, please, what would be your next thought? At least, finally, we got the washing machine. Let's go. What would be your next thought? At least, I should start using the... It should just wash anything. Because I read over time that washing machine does not even wash clothes well. And I didn't think deeply also to ask myself that the people that are saying that washing machine does not wash clothes, well, do they have washing machine? Do they use washing machine? I didn't ask that question. And so I would still pick the duvet and wash it with my hands. Is that wisdom or folly? It is folly. It is folly. But you don't want to say it. Don't worry, I've grown past that. All right? So it, my husband, at some point, there was this one I was just tired. I was just saying, why are you tired? I said, I've been washing. He said, why are you washing? I said, there is washing machine. Washing machine. Like wash, that is the job of that thing. It's not going to, it's not going to cook for you. It is to wash. I said that it doesn't wash. He said, if it doesn't, then you put it again. Let it wash again. Because that is what it has been created for. Then I sat there, I said, truly, if washing machine does not wash properly, then there would have been another innovation to create it. Or maybe they would have stopped production for it. And I said, ha, how much of, uh, you know, Amen. I don't want to say that fool, but it's, a, it's just a state. I'm no longer a fool. I wash anything now. It's like that washing machine. If you can wash me, Seth. <laughs> Amen. Pick wisdom. Do you understand? Be ready to be flexible. It must have been something you've tried and then it's worked. But God knows what is coming and he's saying, take this way. Are you listening? I'm talking about the fact that you must learn to yield to the Holy Spirit part-time. Thank you so much. We will definitely have a wonderful 2024. See you at the crossover. God bless you.